sa inyong lahat at tuloy tayo sa ating devotional this morning, God's Word for Today, sa libro ng Galatians. At let me read sa ating talata this morning sa verse 17 to 19 of Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, verses 17 to 19. Ngunit kung sa ating pagsisikap na at ariing ganap kay Kristo, tayo mismo ay natagpuang mga makasalanan. Si Kristo ba ay lingkod ng kasalanan? Huwag na wang mangyari. Kung ang mga bagay na aking sinira ay aking muling itayo, pinatunayan ko sa aking sarili na ako ay suwail. Sapagkat ako sa pamamagitan ng kautusan ay namatay sa kautusan upang ako ay mabuhay sa Diyos. Here in these particular verses, si Pablo po ay nag uh, nagbibigay ng prinsipyo to correct a wrong notion na kung ang tao po ay mayroong freedom, mayroong kalayaan na because of the grace of God's salvation, magkapatuloy ba siya sa kanyang pagkakasalanan? So, it does make Christ as the servant of sin. Kaya nga may tanong siya dito, is Christ then a servant of sin? Is the gospel of Christ promotes sinfulness. So Paul had answered the critics of the gospel of Jesus. If God declares people righteous for free by faith in Christ, won't everyone just go on sinning? So parang ganun ang iniisip ng mga tao sa mga judaizers na, oh, we do not keep the law anymore, so magkapatuloy tayo sa ating pagkamakasalanan. What motivation would anyone have to do? What is right? Parang yun ang tinatanong nila. So ang tao po ay mag-abuse ng gospel na to, ng grasya ng, ng Panginoon. But Paul said, God forbid, dapat hindi mangyari. Paul's accusers likely had pointed to exactly what happened with Peter. You know, ang ginawa ni Peter, yun siguro ang basihan why these critics had mentioned this or uh, asked this question. When someone feels they are justified by faith in Christ, they could eat with Gentiles with unclean food. Na yun ang ginawa ni Pedro, nakita nila na kumain si Pedro kasama mga hintil na hindi naman clean according to the Judaizers. And sa kanilang paningin, from the Judaizers' perspective, sa kanilang sa mga critics ni Pablo, this was the definition of their sinful lifestyle. That if they are not going to observe the law, if they are not going to follow the Mosaic law, it's like Jesus had promoted that they are going to continue their sinful lifestyle. So ang idea ba ng justification by faith in Christ have turned Jesus into a servant of sin? So Paul's answers was very emphatic and harsh here. Certainly not. So may it never be absolutely not. Dapat hindi. Hindi ganun ang pag-iisip na tama. Kay it is a slight and it is an accusation that Christ promotes sin. Is God's forgiveness listen Shaba? Is a license that we can continue sinning? Now, if we think of this question, marami po na mga tao ganun po rin iniisip na kung tayo po ay naligtas na napatawad na tayo sa ating mga kasalanan, sigurado na ang ating relasyon sa Panginoon, mayroon na tayong security sa ating eternal life. Won't the Christian abuse? Hindi ba na mag-abuse siya sa grasya ng Diyos? I think that kind of thinking is flawed. Because 
ang isang tao po na nakilala sa kanyang pagkamakasalanan na he's hopeless, he's helpless, he is nothing, binigyan lang ng pagkakataon to receive this grace for free. Na hindi naman siya karapat dapat makatanggap ng grasya na to. Karapat dapat niya iparusahan sa impyerno, binigyan siya ng pagkakataon. Hindi ba niya naisip yun na natanggap niya ito for free and then he was going back, he's thinking of going back to the mud. Pinulot niya siya sa putik. Hindi naman siya dapat pulutin sa putik kundi dapat parusahan siya sa kanyang pagka marumi. Pinulot siya doon, kinuha, nilinisan. Anong, anong kayang uring pag-iisip yun na pag biniisip niya na babalik ako sa putik? I think there is a misunderstanding about the grace of God. The grace of God is not a license for us to sin. Grace is not the same as licentiousness. Thus, Paul in rhetoric sa ibang bahagi ng na epistle o sulat ni Pablo sa Romans, mayroong tanong si Pablo doon sa Romans chapter 6, verse 1 and 2 and verse 15. Sabi ni Pablo, or ang tanong ni Pablo, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who have died to sin still live in it? What then? Are we to sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Itong katotohanan o prinsipyo na ito makita din natin sa Galatians chapter 3, verse 21. Dagdag pa dito, nakita ni Pablo ang argumento na to that is really very ridiculous. Paul argues how ridiculous this is na ang isang tao ay mag-abuse sa grasya ng Panginoon. Kung naintindihan niya ang grasya ng Panginoon. Because sabi pa niya, am I going to build a new law? Ang law ba na sinira, buhayin ko ulit? na sundin ko naman. Ay, parang ganun. It, it, it was a ridiculous thought to build a new law than by living freely in God's grace. He says that if he rebuilds the law after tearing it down, he even makes himself to be an even greater sinner because he put himself to another bandage. It's the law that reveals and promotes our sinfulness. Ang law ay nagpapahayag kung ano ka imperfect tayo, na makasalanan tayo. The law is like a mirror, as I explained the other day, na ang law ay nagpapahayag sa atin na tayo ay hindi perfect, makasalanan tayo. And definitely, it's not the free grace of God na if, if not for the free grace of God, through faith in Christ, hindi tayo makaroon ng kapatawaran ng ating kasalanan. So, kung hindi pa namatay si Kristo sa cross, He perfected the sacrifice, He shouted there, it is finished, nabuhay siya ulit galing ng libingan. If not for this, wala tayong pag-asa. We will be judged and punished because of our sin. But because of this grace of salvation, we can receive it by faith in Him alone. So this grace particularly is a gift from God. And if we understand this grace, it should prompt us, it should promote in us the desire to please God. Kaya nga ang response ng isang tao na nakaintindi ng grasya ng Panginoon ay He will live a holy living. This will promote holy living. The grace that we receive will promote holy living. And Paul wrote that in Titus chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. For by the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training or teaching us to renounce ungodliness, and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present days. 
So sa natanggap natin ng grasya, ang biyaya ng Panginoon sa kaligtasan na binigay ng Panginoon. Ang sabi din sa verse 11, Titus 2, 11 na, This grace of God has appeared unto all men. It's given unto all men. Like a, a, a light that is shown, shown into the darkness. Okay, We see this light. It comes to us. And if we receive this, it will teach us to renounce, ungod renounce ungodliness, and so on and so forth. So God's grace, the God's grace of salvation, gives us freedom. What kind of freedom? Freedom to do what we want? To displace God? No. It is the freedom to do the right thing, to obey God, to please God, to keep His commandments. To this, this grace remove us from the bondage of sin, but now it also gives us power, empowerment to obey God's will. So the, the grace that saved us from the bondage of sin is the grace also of God that empowers us to be victorious over sin by doing His will. So Paul has addressed the question that these Judaizers had raised that kung isang tao po ay na justified by faith alone in Christ, hindi po siya mag-abuse if he understood the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you abusing the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ? Is it because nakatanggap ka na Pahinoon Jesus Christ to sabihin niyo na I can do what I want? Anyway, hindi naman ako maimpyerno? Anyway, sigurado naman ako sa aking kaligtasan is that your understanding of the favor and the grace of God? Hindi ka ba na, na hihiya that you have abused the grace of God if that's your thinking? Well, the grace of God does not make us proud. It will keep us always humble. That I'm just like a worm. I'm just nobody. I'm just like a mud. I'm, I have nothing that God could love me. Yet God loves me and so humbling. If we think of the grace of God that way, it will grip our hearts. It will teach us to be thankful and grateful for the salvation that we receive in Christ. Let it be na ganun po ang mangyari sa puso niyo, puso ko, as we think of the grace of God's salvation. Manalangin tayo. Panginoon, salamat po for this morning. Thank you for the grace of Christ. That He died for our sins not because we are good, not because of what He can get from us, but simply because He loved us. Thank you that we receive this grace freely. And this salvation, Lord, is kept by the power of God. And it is sure. But help us, Lord, to realize that we do not need to abuse the, your goodness and grace. Help us to be prompted, to be grateful, to live a holy life, to please you in everything as our our, our show and demonstration of thankfulness for the salvation that we receive in Christ. Bless this to our heart, Lord, today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.